The day was off to a great start. I dodged the inevitable morning traffic on the way to work, and when I got to the office, miracle of miracles, there was a parking space right by the front door. An hour after I arrived at work, Natalie, my secretary, looked into my office and said that Tom Snelling was waiting for me on line two. I picked up the phone, said good morning, and then listened as Tom told me that after thinking it over carefully, he had decided to finally sign the contract. It was a deal I had been working on for almost two months, and it was a contract worth over six million for my company. Tom told me that the signed contract had been faxed to me right as we were talking. I thanked him profusely, and after he hung up, I walked over to the fax machine, and sure enough, the contract was already there. I took the paperwork and headed to Barry's office. That's my boss and the owner of the company. I asked his secretary to see if Barry could spare a few minutes for me. She checked, and he appeared to be available, so I walked into his office and told him I was there to brighten his day. I handed him the contract, and he looked at it and smiled. He told me that he didn't think for a minute that I would get anywhere with Snelling. A few of the other employees had tried, but it hadn't worked out. Barry smiled and said that my bonus, based on the deal, would be obscenely large. And then he said it was time for me to get back to work. At 11 o'clock, Stella, the boss's secretary, called me and told me that Barry needed to see me urgently. When I went into his office and wanted to sit down, he told me not to bother and I wouldn't have to stay long enough to get comfortable. He then told me that as of noon this afternoon, I was the new vice president of sales and that one of my first tasks as vice president was to get on a plane to Dallas and smooth the ruffled feathers of Mike Thomas, who was one of our biggest customers. He told me that Stella had all the details and sent me on my way. As I was picking up Stella's paperwork, she asked me if I wanted her to organize my trip, but I thanked her for the offer and told her I could handle it myself. Back at my office, I tried to contact my wife, Terry, to tell her the good news, but I was told she wasn't at work so I left a message saying I would call back later. I headed home to pack a bag for the road, and when I pulled up, I saw Terry's car parked in the driveway. Strange, I thought, parking behind her. As soon as I opened the door of the house, I realized what was going on. Oh my God, yes! Sweetheart, make me finish! Was echoing throughout the house. I walked to the bedroom door and saw my wife being had by Randall Cunningham, who was her boss at work. They were so into it that they didn't even notice I was standing in the doorway, and they were making so much noise that they didn't hear the clicks my cell phone was making as I took pictures of them. I quickly reviewed the photos to make sure I had clear pictures of both of their faces, and then quietly left the house. It took me 25 minutes to get to the firm, and when I got there, I asked the receptionist if I could speak to Bart Sampson. We knew each other pretty well, and he stood up to greet me and offered me his hand as I entered the office. It's good to see you, Rob, but if you're here to ask Terry to lunch, you've wasted your time because she's not here. I know exactly where she is, and I also know who she's with. I'd like to show you something. And I showed him the pictures on my phone. When did you take the pictures? About half an hour ago. Where? At my house. They didn't even notice me when I took the pictures. They're supposed to be having lunch with one of our clients. He checked the index card on his desk, read me the number, and asked, Terry's cell phone number, right? I nodded affirmatively, and he picked up his phone and made the call. We waited, and finally his call was answered. Terry, your husband is here in my office, and he just showed me some very nasty pictures of you and Randall that he took about a half hour ago. You both need to come back here and pick up any personal belongings you have here and go to HR and get your final paychecks. I don't want any trace of either of you still in this building by five o'clock this afternoon. There was a brief pause, and then, no, Terry, we have nothing to talk about. Goodbye. He hung up and said, I'm sorry, Rob. I had no idea there was something going on between them. What are you going to do? Divorce her. No, I meant about my company. Nothing. Even if you have a CPNP that prohibits what they did and you were supposed to enforce it, it's obvious to me that you had no more idea what they were doing than I did. I'm just sorry I won't be seeing you at company picnics and parties anymore. I stood up, we shook hands, and I turned to leave. But before I got to the door, he said, One more thing before you go see a lawyer. I turned to face him. I've never done business with your company because your wife worked here, and I've always been concerned about conflicts of interest. Terry doesn't work here anymore, so give me a call sometime next week, okay? I smiled at him and said, 
I will definitely call you. And I left to look for a store to buy everything I needed for my trip to Dallas.